Rothenburn. He's the former Dean of Science at the Australian National University. He's now with the University of Queensland and joins me from Brisbane via Skype. Um, how worrying is this announcement by North Korea that it could carry out an H-bomb test in the Pacific? And why would they choose the, choose the Pacific? Well, one of the reasons they would choose the Pacific, it's a little bit off their landmass. And uh, if you look at where most of the H-bomb tests have been to date, uh, a number of countries have tested their weapons in the Pacific. Just, just talk us briefly through why a hydrogen bomb is so powerful and how does fission or fusion come into play here? So, so with nuclear weapons, there are two ways of getting the energy. The first way is in the, the fusion bombs, which were the first bombs. And in those fusion bombs, uh, the fission bombs, you have uh, uranium or plutonium material that you can energize so that the uranium splits apart and releases energy. And this releases an enormous amount of energy. The hydrogen bomb is a process where, as well as having that process, you have another process, which is the fusion process, where you take light isotopes of hydrogen and they fuse together to make helium. And in that process, they release more energy. So what you have essentially is a two-stage weapon where you've got the, the normal nuclear weapon, if you like, with a, a blanket of extra energy around it. So these bombs are considerably more powerful. And is this sort of test, Aidan, likely to be underwater or an airburst over the water? And what's the difference between the two? Well, again, that makes very little difference with a weapon of this size. It, it really doesn't matter whether it's near the surface, on the surface, or under the surface. Now, you know, if it's deep underground, um, the radioactive material that gets released is contained. Uh, but actually, if it's on the surface or above the surface, very little difference. What about the danger of radiation fallout? Well, again, with these weapons testings, the signature of that testing uh, extends around the world. You know, the radiation levels, when you disperse it around the globe, are very low. But we, we still see signatures of the weapons tests that happened in the 50s uh, in the Pacific. Aidan Burton, thank you very much indeed for your time. Pleasure.